that. All right, so we're going to build a Node.js skill that is called Parrot that's just going to repeat dumb stuff for us. And we'll deploy it and all that stuff. So the first thing to do is, since it's a, it's a Node app, we're going to write a package JSON. I'm going to stick a bunch of stuff in it. It has a name, a version, description, uh, some kind of entry, and a, a couple of dependencies. So uh, we're going to use um, this Alexa app uh, dependency where you don't need express and uh, you know license whatever so um, let's add node modules to this and npm install oh and we should use nvm like seven or nvm use seven. Uh, boom, boom, boom. oh yeah it's not very friendly Okay, so we've got ourselves a bunch of NPMs. Uh, we're going to use this library called Alexa app. Uh, so the, uh, at the, the very simple skill implementation uh, is, we're going to call this parrot.js. Require the Alexa app library. Create a new instance of the app. We should call this parrot. And uh, there is the launch sequence, which is what happens when the app starts. Because most of these apps on these devices, you have to invoke it somehow. So the first time you as a user invoke it for yourself on your device, it, it launches. So there's gonna be a, it's going to say a thing when it launches. And in this case, it will say, I am a parent. Um, so of course, we like, uh, we like tests. So uh, we're not going to go ahead without tests. And uh, let's get ourselves some mocha. Yeah, install. And then let's write a test and see what this thing is. Uh, that's not what I want. We fold their test. And test parrot.js. OK, and uh, the, our test is pretty rudimentary. This is just, um, we're going to boot an Express server. We're going to mount our Parrot application inside that Express server. So this is just a Node.js function app. And we just mount it inside an Express server. It doesn't have to, once we deploy to Lambda, it doesn't actually have an Express server, for example. Uh, and we're going to listen on the port. And this is our test. So uh, we should be able to write, it works. And uh, let's see, this does nothing. Um, test. OK, here's our, our test. So let's fill out the test. Uh, we're just going to write that it responds to invalid data. So uh, it's, a, it's an express server that mounts our app. Um, so I'm just going to send it. I do a post to our app, Parrot. And I'm going to send it an empty body. And I'm expecting some response that's going to say, uh, some, give me some output, uh, which is actually SSML, which is the uh, speech, simple speech markup language or something like that. And so you have, it says literally speak error, not a valid request. So that's the way this, this app will always succeed unless something unexpected happens and say, like, I'm sorry, I couldn't do anything. Because we want the device not to fail. We want the device to say uh, the errors. Uh, so let's see if this actually works. Woohoo, we got our, we sent it garbage, we got back an error, not a valid request. Cool. All right. Um, let's check our launch request. So this is, uh, this request is a certain type. This is what the Alexa platform sends when a, a user opens uh, an app or a skill. And we're sending this request of type launch request. That there is more fields to it, but for now, this is like as simple as that. And so it's going to re respond with what we coded in our uh, parrot.js here, which was, I'm a parrot. Um, and so let's see if this actually happens. Voila, I'm a parrot. OK? Uh, you can curl it. It's just an HTTP server uh, and all that jazz. All right. so. Um, we want to deploy this to uh, Lambda. So there are many, many ways to deploy this, this basic skill that just says, I'm a parrot when it starts. Uh, the, the one is you can put an entire web app with, like, uh, with Express and then say Heroku or something like that. 
uh, or you can use AWS Lambda because there's only one entry point, one entry function. Lambda works really well and you don't need that whole infrastructure. Uh, so we're going to deploy this to Lambda. Now Lambda is a little bit particular. Um, we're going to use an app called Apex. Uh, it's a tool to deploy to Lambda and uh, it wants things in a certain set of directories. So I'm going to move some things around. I'm going to create functions parrot. I'm going to move my, um, oh yeah, we can get in it if we want. Uh, I'm going to move my parrot JS into, into that functions parrot. I'm going to move my package JSON there. So I'm just moving the entire app into functions parrot directory, subdirectory. So when you look at it now, I just have my, we don't need known modules here anymore. I just have my functions parrot with a test package JSON and parrot JS. So I just moved it into a subfolder, not, nothing else. Um, all right, so next we're gonna go to our AWS console. And so I'm logged in as IT, so you can, you can see this uh, without me. And on Lambda, I'm going to create a new Lambda function. I'll create a Lambda function. I am going to use Node.js and I'm going to just do a blank function. Um, you need triggers, so this is going to be a Alexis skills kit. This assigns a bunch of permissions, roles, and other crap to it. Um, it's like a resource policy. Um, so it's callable from actual Alexa, from the Alexa platform. I'm going to call this, uh, I think we're calling this Parrot. Uh, we're going to call this Alexa Parrot. Uh, this is a Parrot. Now, JS, the code, we don't care. Um, we, the handler, we could leave the default. This is the entry point, so index handler here. Uh, we're going to choose a, to create a new role. We're going to call the role, um, I think I, I'm saying uh, Alexa Parrot. And then uh, I think that's it for now. All right, so here's our Alexa Parrot function. It has some code, which is just the dummy for now, as a configuration, triggers, you know, and stuff like that, monitoring for logs. All right, next, um, we are going to use I Apex. So uh, Apex is installed with from, from GitHub, I already have it. You also need to have AWS CLI uh, so that you can push things to AWS and then you have to configure it with AWS configure the first time. Uh, if you've never used it, I already logged in. Okay, we, the entry point uh, cannot be our, uh, our Parrot function in Parrot.js because that, uh, that doesn't export anything other than the actual Alexa app. So we're just gonna create an index.js here. And that one is going to say require our app. And then uh, Alexa app has a function called Lambda that exposes its entry point to Lambda. So exports handle, which is uh, what Apex configures by default, is Parrot Lambda. And that's how it knows what to call. Um, so Apex wants a project JSON at the very top. So Apex is deploying multiple functions at a time, usually. So that's why this folder structure is there. Uh, it's a package, it's a project JSON. And so uh, this is called, the name is Alexa. Um, this is gonna create for each function, Alexa underscore something. So you remember I created Alexa parrot. It's gonna create Alexa underscore parrot, Alexa dot whatever other function I have there, or oh, underscore, okay. Uh, and then I'm a parrot, and then there's this role, it comes from my uh, I am here. So let's check that it's actually correct. So I created a role for my parrot thing. Here it is. And here's the URN to that role. It's correct because I've done this before and I think they get unique uh, numbers. This is our IAM user, so they don't change here. Okay, so this, this is um, the deployment uh, story. So let's go back to Lambda. We, you still, we still haven't pushed any code to Lambda. We still have our like default code that's here. Uh, so I think we are basically done and we can just do Apex deploy. 
And there you go. Now next, once we have uh, our um, our code, we actually need uh, our uh, intent to do something. You can't uh, test an, a, an Amazon skill without any intent. You, launch intent is just not enough. They have something in the UI that doesn't let you do it. So we'll, let's write uh, an actual intent. Um, this goes in our Parrot.js. And the intent is going to be called repeat intent. It, it takes a parameter, which is called a slot. Uh, the key for that is value, and we're going to expect a number. Now, this is a very rigid set of things that you can accept. You can't accept star whatever. Uh, you can't say, like, accept a word. You have to accept uh, one of Amazon dot something, or you have to provide a list of custom slots. So for artsy is about intent, we actually provided a list of artists. Because uh, Amazon's list of artists doesn't have anything around visual artists. And then you, the utterances are examples of what you are trying to say. So typically, I, what I want this to do, I want to say, uh, Alexa, ask Parrot to repeat uh, three, and I want it to repeat something three times. I'm going to take a number. So this says repeat the value. Value request slot value. Uh, we can default it to you know two. And it will say, uh, you said something, and then that number of times will say, I repeat, you said something. It's a very, very smart skill. Um, OK, of course, we can do it without tests, because you know, how dare we? I'm not writing code without tests. So here's a little test that responds to repeat event. We post to Parrot, and this time you can see the request has a type intent request, the name of the intent being invoked, and the value that I'm passing in. This is the Alexa platform will do that. So when I say Alexa, ask Parrot to repeat two, it parses my what I said, it packages this, it identifies the intent from the schema, and then sends it to my, uh, to my skill, then gets whatever I'm saying back and spits it as waveform to the device. And so I expect it to say, you said two, I repeat, you said two, I repeat, you said two. Uh, let's make sure this actually works. Beam install. I'm sorry, I'm not using yarn. Shame on me. Um, yeah. OK, here's my parrot. And look, it all works. Great. So now we can push this to, um, we can push this up. And it's going to Apex deploy. Here's a new version. So interestingly, uh, when you deploy to Lambda, all your environment is blown off. And it's like a full new version of an app. So something to, to understand, uh, Lambda is, uh, is not a infrastructure where you have settings uh, that persist across versions. So every time I do Apex deploy, it's like a new world. So it's a new function. And actually, you have access to functions in, with all the versions as well, if you want to. Lambda is interesting like that. We don't use any environment here, but that's something that you, you see otherwise. OK, so we've, we have a Lambda function. We still need to turn it into a skill. So we go to developeramazon.com. We sign in. Go to click Alexa, and then it's very confusing. You have to click on Alexa Skills Kit. Um, uh, all right, add a new skill. We're going to call this parrot. Invocation name is parrot. Next. Um, the intent schema and the sample, sample utterances is something we can generate. So let's write, um, let's write a little bit of code to do that. <coughs> we'll call this skill JS. And it's just we require a parrot app. And we show the schema and the utterances. It's something that the library that we use does. Um, node skill JS. OK, so here is our intent schema. That's basically what we put in the, in the code. Um, and here is our utterances. So here it just says repeat value. And next, so it's going to generate it's going to learn from this interaction model and do smart things on, on the side. Uh, we want to call Lambda in North America. We need the Lambda functions um, ARN, which is here. And then uh, we can test this from here. So we can say, uh, you know, ask Parrot to repeat to. And you can see, this is the XML response that came back. It says, you said two, you said, I repeat, you said two, and so on and so forth. Next. We don't care about this. This publishing information is for submission and stuff like that. Uh, but we basically have a skill now. And if you have a, 
uh, Alexa that's configured on the on your test on the account that you're using here. You can actually start talking to it. So I have an actual device here. Alexa, open Parrot. I have a Parrot. Alexa, ask Parrot repeat two. You said two. Okay, so pretty cool. So we've got ourselves a Parrot skill. You go to your uh, alexa.amazon.com, which is like the consumer side of this, which has your apps, your skills. That's why you install the skills. Uh, here, under your skills, you have uh, right now a bunch of cool skills. One of them is this Parrot skill. You can see this WS is the test skill that automatically gets published to your available to your Alexa from there. Uh, you, you can't give somebody else an, a, a test skill. You have to register this way, yeah. So we have, we have other skills here. So this is, this is a very simple test. So you don't actually need to publish a skill unless you want some, somebody else to use it. Uh, you can do it all there. Um, so that's it for our skill. Um, let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so there is, uh, the code is on dblock Alexa Parrot. Uh, if you want to look at it, it has the walkthrough and uh, all the jazz. And then um, a few other things that are interesting about the Alexas. Uh, it, there's a framework, an OGS framework for building these skills. It's called Alexa App. So this does not use the Amazon's SDK. Amazon's SDK is fine, uh, but it, it lacks like usability and, uh, and friendliness. So it's a very, very rough on the edges. So um, we, uh, there's a whole group of people that have built a few other things. Alexa app is what I used here in the demo. Uh, Alexa app server is a server that allows you to mount these uh, in uh, in test mode, so in development. So if you want to, you know, curl to your local thing, you don't actually need to write all that of that logic. You just drop Alexa app server in the root under where, where you have these functions skills, and then it, it mounts them automatically and uh, has a debugger and has a bunch of other tools that come with it. And it's easier to write tests and stuff like that. Um, it, there's libraries like Alexa utterances that generate these utterances and many more others. There's other types of things here. Uh, something I didn't mention, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, co if you're going to host this yourself, so not on Lambda, uh, where there's like IAM permissions of invocation, you have to um, you have to verify that the request came from the Alexa platform. For that, there's some certificate verification. Alexa app server supports all that stuff. Uh, so in this code, uh, some way I wrote like check cert false. That means that I want my skill to not care about that kind of stuff. But uh, if you're doing this for real, you need to verify that the request is legit and that somebody is not bombarding your functions uh, with l illegitimate. Uh, request. So there's infrastructure for that and it's all figured out for you. Um, right, that's Alexa. And uh, Artsy's skill is open source uh, and uh, it can answer some awesome questions. It has a new feature which can talk about podcasts. So Alexa, ask Artsy for a summary of the latest podcast. Artsy podcast episode 24, why we found the arts. This week we discussed the broader ideological... Etc. Alexa, stop. Alexa, ask Artsy to play the latest podcast. Before we get to this week's show, a special announcement. Next week, it will be regularly scheduled. No, that's Isaac. <laughs> so uh, uh, Alexa has a capability of playing audio streams. So you just give it an MP3. Uh, so the, uh, the Elderfield, the Artsy Alexa skill will uh, pull the RSS feed from SoundCloud that we published to iTunes and then just use that to fetch the latest MP3 stream and just like spit it out. So it's really easy to send audio to Alexa that is not your own words, but you can type to, to, to you can do text to speech or you can just send uh, files for audio so it can create some interesting experiences as well. Uh, it's like audio player functionality. You have to enable it in the Alexa UI. Uh, that's all I have, thank you.